Sean, you, uh, you need to turn on your mic. Everyone's mic is on, yeah. Yep. This is the meeting of the Board of Directors on February 15th, 2023, Board of Directors of the COA. Uh, do I have a motion to call the meeting to order? So moved. Second. Can we uh, say our names around the table just for the audience yes. at home? Oh, we didn't bring our little slips. Yeah. Yes, please, why don't you start? Uh, I'm Larry McKelleny, uh, board member. Barbara Sanborn, board member. John Cass, director. Irene Thomas, board member. Laurel Pahalski, chair. Marie Waller, treasurer. Okay, thank you. Before we begin, I'd like Marie to read the mission statement of the Council on Aging. <clears throat> the mission of the Council on Aging is to advocate for the Groveland's, old, for Groveland's older adults to identify their needs, to develop and implement services, to meet their health, economic, social, and cultural needs, to encourage maximum independence, and to improve their quality of life. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We'd like to welcome our new director, Sean Cass. Um, he has been very busy in the last two weeks and one day <laughs> of hire. And uh, we will, you know, we warmly welcome you. Welcome to our meeting. Um, and what we're going to start with is the approval of the minutes in January. We had um, a meeting on January 18th. So. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. And that was the only, yeah, okay, the other one. Is that it? January yes. January 26th. It's January. Um, oh, that was us too, yes. And I'm sorry, yes, the interview meeting. Um, and do I have a motion to approve the minutes of January 26th? So moved. Um, yeah, we need a discussion. Typo. I know, yes. Okay, all right. Robert caught it and let me know. <laughs> oh, now see, when you they sent amend, it, amended. Well, yeah, you so amended I, it. I amended it for <laughs> what I said yes, yesterday. Yes. yes. And I'm sure it was not, it was probably a spell check. That was, wanted to be Sean, make D. No, I was reading a book with an S E A N, and it was so in my <laughs> visual oh. memory that I, <laughs> <Okay>. I spelled <laughs> it wrong. <laughs> I apologize, Sean. No I knew better. <laughs> okay, so. He didn't do, do better. <laughs> a, a motion to approve the minutes as amended. Larry. So moved. Second. And Barbara. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now where are we? We are, I'm gonna find the minutes, the present minutes, here we go. Uh, next we will have the director's report. Thank you, I'm excited to be here for my first meeting. Uh, it's so far so good, everything is, uh, seems to be going very well. Everybody's been very welcoming. Uh, the town department heads have been very helpful in uh, my first couple of weeks. Um, and as you mentioned, they've been very busy, so I will share a few updates with all of you today. Um, and certainly let me know if you'd like to see anything going forward in particular. Um, uh, happy to make any adjustments going forward. Uh, sure. I have a question. Sure. This director's report, mm -hmm. um, is it L um, able to be attached to the minutes? Yeah. Okay, because at one time we were not to do that they were at, because there was some information like personal information that she put in the directors this was years ago and I think it's much easier to have this attached to the minutes and approved so that Irene's not trying to carry every little dollar and cent or whatever that goes along keep, huh? okay so from now what do you okay Irene so you yes, can attach yes. this yes okay mm -hmm. sorry Go ahead. No problem. So uh, starting at the top with the food pantry, uh, Nisha and I met with the uh, partners at ONT to talk a little bit about uh, our food pantry. And uh, we will start fresh food uh, delivery um, uh, in the next couple of weeks. Um, we are going through training with their online system uh, next week. And uh, we have set up a cadence with them where we will place the orders by Tuesday around noon 
They will deliver Wednesday every week around noon. And as such, we've made uh, a request to uh, adjust the pantry hours slightly mm -hmm. um, for Wednesday afternoon drop in from two to four and then Thursday um, by order or by appointment uh, nine to three for now. This was uh, based on kind of what we've learned so far as a team, as well as some recommendations from our neighbor's table based on the rollout that mm -hmm. they did recently for Salisbury with this program. Uh, they recommended that we start small. I also would like to take a couple of weeks. We will put it in the newsletter, the subsequent newsletters, but I'd like to take the next week or two to work out any kinks in the ordering system and the platform. I don't foresee any, but um, with technology, you never know. Uh, and also get a sense for volume and what have you through March and April before we make any other adjustments. Um, but certainly great things there. They also provided some uh, updates to us um, on our uh, fridge and freezer in terms of what's required uh, to capture temperature readings daily. And Nisha also sent uh, to them our models, our making models of our fridge and freezer to pass on to uh, Greater Boston Food Bank. So all really good things there. Um, like I said, we'll start small and then uh, we'll go forward. Any questions on that? Could we mention that um, we have been advertising the food pantry for all community members and we were told now that it is not it's only for seniors and i think that's an important message mm -hmm. really yeah it's yeah. changed so i don't know we certainly won't turn anybody away we will serve them and support them and provide guidance in terms of going to ont um, but we certainly wouldn't um, send anybody away um, again this was at the recommendation as well of um, right. our neighbor's table just again to start small get a sense of what is needed on a weekly basis, what is used on a weekly basis. We can also round it out using gift cards and different things like that, yeah. um, and then kind of grow from there. But the, the fresh food from our neighbor's table is for seniors. Be I believe there are other places that we yes. can recommend people go to if you're not a senior. Right. And like you say, we can round it out with gift cards to people who are in need, so. Right. So how will we know what will get ordered or what to order for the refrigerator and freezer? We, based on uh, the appointments that get made for Thursday in particular, mm -hmm. and what we hear in terms of feedback uh, on Wednesday as well, right. uh, we will carry staples uh, every week and then kind of nuance from what we're hearing um, okay. as people come in. Um, it has not received a ton of traffic in the last couple of weeks since I've been here, um, but I certainly think that as we develop that cadence, mm -hmm. organically we will get this feedback and we'll be able to build on it from there pretty, pretty easily. Once it's up and running, it's publicized in the newsletter, then I will do something a little broader um, in terms of PR um, once I feel like we're in really good shape and we have some good learning under our belt. Okay, good. Any other questions on that? Okay. Uh, a quick staffing uh, and HR update. Uh, I asked Maureen Lee Locke, who has graciously agreed to be um, both our van driver and interim outreach coordinator, um, to work a set schedule um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, it provides a consistent schedule to the community members calling in and asking for assistance, um, specifically on Mondays and Tuesdays. It also coincides with her personal availability. Um, and then the third reason is it ensures that she doesn't go over her hours. So even though we're asking her to do you know, double duty, mm -hmm. she cannot go over a combined 18 hours a week. Um, and so this kind of helps with that as well. And what will happen is on Monday and Tuesday, she will flex between uh, outreach and van driving, depending on what trips and appointments and things are set up on those two days. And then her hours will be, um, and her salary will be paid accordingly based on what that looks like um, to date uh, I did check with the town administrator we have not received interest in either open positions uh, we did receive a question uh, specifically related to the outreach coordinator position with no resume uh, or credentials attached but just merely a question about can I work remotely um, is this job able to be performed remotely 
Um, I, I would say no. I, we said no, um, but certainly no. Uh, she, it was the person who uh, inquired uh, did not formally apply and did not submit any um, uh, resume or anything like that. Um, we will continue to monitor it over the next week or two, and then I'll reevaluate on where we want to post it. Um, I, I think um, based on uh, the what I know in other municipalities, I think the hourly rate is probably not attracting as many candidates as we probably would like, um, but we'll just evaluate going forward uh, and then repost um, in a, on a couple of sites. Um, but to date, we have not received uh, anything. Um, and then um, a question had come up this week regarding my performance evaluation going forward. Uh, I don't necessarily need an answer on this today, but just something for us to be thinking about um, with a six month probation period and then obviously going forward, because I anticipate staying around, uh, <laughs> that uh, how you, the board would like to handle that in mm -hmm. partnership with the town administrator. Mm -hmm. um, so we can we check our bylaws. Yep. I'm not sure. Yep. We'll what, check uh, those and see. Because I had two sets of bylaws in yep. my head and I don't know which. Exactly. Yep. Or three yep. actually. But so just something yeah. to be mindful and mm -hmm. we can do our due diligence collectively and then we can bring it back to next month's and meeting. And I don't know if there is an actual evaluation form. So c the Collins study that was done, Okay. in addition to that, the next mm -hmm. phase was um, creating an evaluation form so that it's a little bit more templated for consistency across the departments. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the, the town will be rolling that out going forward. I have not seen it. Um, it has not <coughs> been rolled out. Um, but I do know that that's kind of the next uh, part um, with the relationship with Collins to come. So you're saying the town would make the evaluation form uh, I think it's something that they're the creating okay. yeah, that they're creating as terms of based on best practices that's good to know so that there's consistency across and have you had any indication of a timeline to prepare that I do not mm -hmm. um, but I can certainly ask well, I just know it's I know it's yeah. next on, it was next on the uh -huh. in, in, okay. after the study it was good next on the list yeah I have two questions uh, sure. on that First one is, does the board need to approve the job descriptions? Uh, this board need to approve the job descriptions. And the second oh. is um, the last time I checked the town website, uh, the information on they had not been updated. They still they still have uh, a plea for people to join the search committee. Uh, <laughs> so I uh, just want to make sure that, you know, the uh, jobs that are available are what's prominent and not things that are you know, uh, in the past. Okay. Thank you. We can take that as part of our update for next month as well. Um, I do have a copy of the Collins specific um, job description here. Um, in talking with the town administrator, the, the, the general feedback is they're provided for new hires going forward mm -hmm. and to be used to provide guidance where there is a gap for existing departments or existing employees for consistency. So we can adopt that specific job description um, subsequently for me and for whomever else uh, in the department if we would like. Um, but I know that it was to serve kind of two purposes, one to fill a gap if there was one mm -hmm. and uh, provide consistency and then definitely be leveraged for new hires going forward. So we could, um, as a board, you know, do, do, some, do some due diligence on the bylaws and then regroup on the job descriptions, the approvals and the subsequent topics for next month if we'd like. Um, but I do have both if anybody would like to see them. Uh, any other questions on? Oh, there we go. Right here, the next one says that. that. Okay. Uh, and then just next, um, warrants and payroll. Uh, warrants uh, signed and submitted on 2-8. Payroll for 127 to 2 2 is signed and submitted on 2-9. Uh, any questions on that? Okay. Uh, fiscal year 23 budget. I provided a snapshot here. Uh, just for us to take a look at and I will am happy to provide this snapshot within my director's update every month on an ongoing basis in addition to this snapshot I will update the kind of monthly budget detail spreadsheet 
um, going forward as well. Um, uh, and I, these numbers here are based on the town accountant's uh, reporting that I will get every month. So this is what you're seeing here. The snapshot is uh, fiscal year, the start of fiscal year through G uh, January 31st, 2023. Dude. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so next month it'll be through February. The end of month. <laughs> and this, um, and this format is the same format that is used by the town accountant. Uh, yes and no. Uh, so it's it's the information is from the town accountant. Mm -hmm. I actually just pared down the columns. Okay. Yes. Uh, so that you have this quick view. Great. So that it's helpful. And then I will update the detail based on the town accountant reporting uh, that is received every month as well. And you'll have a copy of that mm -hmm. as we do. Okay. Any questions on what you're looking at here in terms of the snapshot? In your estimation, does this seem to be about where we should be it, in most in all line items or it, most it does the the only uh and i i didn't put them in here i just realized but the only two uh line items that are basically spent are the two expense line items ex the general expense and the van expense uh so i spent some time some significant time over the first couple of weeks looking at the budget both the current budget budget and the trends in terms of the spend to date uh, in prep for meetings and such, uh, as well as fiscal 24. Um, and I think, just to be very candid, I think um, what I will do going forward, I, what I will absolutely do going forward is I'll be very consistent about what items are paid out of which budget. So I think historically, in my research and looking through the reporting, um, you may have something come out of one line item one month and then a different line item another month. So it makes it a little difficult to track certain things, especially when uh, we're trying to build a budget for next year based on this year's actuals and the current volume of uh, programming that we're providing to the community. Uh, so I spent a little bit of time tracking those numbers down um, and I will be very consistent about that going forward and then into okay. next year as well. And the numbers are different because we have been without a director. We have been right. without right. an outreach, you know, so right. that, that percentage. Um, Nothing here surprises me based on what right. we've experienced What's, in the last six months. Um, and now I have a question about we have quite a bit left in the formula grant mm -hmm. that does carry over from my understanding to the following fiscal year where we will be getting another amount this amount ish. I mean ish yeah can we use the formula grant to help right you know for the end from here till June 30 mm -hmm. 30th 31st whatever it is to supplement that van expense and the um, other expenses where we have depleted that line item we can uh just, uh, I'll give you an a, a idea of kind of where my head is at in terms mm -hmm. of how to use the, the line items going forward. Um, historically, obviously salaries would come out of the town operating expense. My goal going forward is to have as much, if not all of that, out of that bucket going forward. The revolving account in the formula grant, because the Department of Transportation grant, those dollars will basically be done come June 30th of this year, even though we have a responsibility to the Department of Transportation grant for, for the whole calendar year. So that's definitely something to, to be mindful of. Uh, but my, my thinking is, is that formula grant and revolving account should be used for programming expenses specifically. So if I can get as much we will have to be, I'll have to be a little flexible between now and the end of the fiscal well, that's year. That's what I mean, yes. yeah, for now. But going forward, what I would like to see is, mm. um, and we'll talk a little bit about this here in a minute, is that those two line items are specifically used for expenses associated with programming to serve But for the now, we can yeah. use that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And do we know if on the formula grant, 
you say it can be carried over, but mm -hmm. in some of my experiment, past experience with grants, it could only be carried over a certain amount of time, like three months or something. Is there a restriction like that? Do we know on the formula grant? There isn't. I've asked many questions about the formula grant in the last two weeks. Uh, and in short, I will say that every response that I get, uh, I've kept, um, but also um, has been very... Um, conducive to flexibility, let's put it that way. <laughs> okay. So it is used at our discretion. Um, my, personal, my personal point of view on it is I feel like we have a responsi responsibility to the grant to use it for specific things. Mm -hmm. So I will d make sure that that happens. Um, but it appears in the various qu times I've asked the question in different ways that we have quite a bit of flexibility in terms of carryover and you know how it's used i personally would just like to see the accounting and the reporting of the budget to be much cleaner than it has mm -hmm. been mm -hmm. um, for a variety of reasons and it, uh, if we ever get asked uh, about uh, the expenses and what we've applied the grant to it would make that story and that picture much clearer uh, to those asking it so um, that's kind of my thinking on that but so but now, in the meantime, in the we meantime, will, until yeah, we, we will, until we have the reset button on July one, so to speak, um, we have some flexibility. Great, thank you, thank mm -hmm. you. Which brings me to fiscal year yes. twenty four. Um, in uh, just kind of expanding on what I just left off with in terms of uh, trying to keep it as clean as possible. On the third page, I did provide to all of you just a quick mm -hmm. overview. Uh, I have been asked to come back to FinCom on March 1st and re-present the budget uh, request for fiscal year 24. Um, and in keeping with some of the things that I just said, um, you will see on the third page um, a draft, I'm certainly open to feedback and questions, um, of what I would propose to them on the first. Um, a couple of things as you look at that. Um, the, the budget that is there is um, a view that consists of a consolidated view of operational expenses uh, to the municipal budget. So all salary expense items would be 100%. My request is to be 100% paid out of the municipal budget, including salary expenses, and use any gift or grant line items specifically for expenses related to programming and services. Um, I also propose that um, the assistant director salary is consolidated completely to the municipal budget um, as well, uh, as opposed to the uh, cumulative salary which is being paid for out of the three different buckets as of right now. Um, I am also requesting that we increase general and van expense light items to match what the actuals look like for fiscal year 22 and year to date uh, 23. And by that, I mean I went and looked at what we were spending on fuel for the van. Uh, and so what you're seeing there is based on our average monthly expense for fuel. Um, and then on the general uh, expense light item, it consists of um, our core two operating expenses for the department, which is the My Senior Center platform, which is our mm -hmm. CRM platform, which provides all of our reporting, tracking, and monitoring capability, which we certainly need, as well as the T-Mobile account. Um, what you're seeing in terms of those two line items there are based on actuals um, over that time period. Uh, what it doesn't cover are things for um, the programming and the events, hospitality, entertainment, education, services, but strictly what we need in order to operate uh, the department at this point. And I think it's important to note that it's based on the current level of programming. So if as we grow, which is my intention, is that, that we continue to build out the programming uh, and the services, that we, this will provide as a foundation. My hope is that it will provide as a solid foundation for us to build on um, over the next year or two. Absolutely. Um, and then just a couple of other things uh, there associated with the budget. Um, the outreach coordinator, I am, uh, and I'm, I'm certainly open to discussion on this, but I am leaving the outreach coordinator position specifically to part-time. Uh, but I am increasing the hours slightly to 16 and in requesting that we increase the hourly rate so that we tracked 
um, qualified candidates. I think it's very important to have somebody here it consistently several days in a row mm -hmm. because of the types of services coming out of the pandemic that are required, both social and um, um, uh, uh, mental and physical um, uh, programs that are needed, uh, changes to the SNAP program, um, changes in the pandemic uh, related services that will expire in the next few weeks. Um, and as is the nature of the position, you could spend one day, um, four hours during that day and talk to several people and you could, the outreach coordinator could spend the four hours dealing with one or two particular situations. So having somebody here four hours for four days in a row, Monday through Thursday, at an increased hourly rate that attracts the talent and the skill set that we need is kind of my goal there. Um, I'm also, again, just kind of mindful of building it out. So if we attract the right person for the role, this person, my hope, is somebody that will grow with us in the future. And as things expand, we can um, move that person in the future to hopefully maybe a full-time role. Right. Uh, the van driver, uh, that position remains unchanged year over year. Um, and we do need to maintain our current investment level until um, December of 2023 to satisfy the DOT grant, as I mentioned. As I mentioned, the expense line items are based on actuals. Um, and then the van expenses are based on actuals as well. Okay. So that's my view. Uh, you will notice that um, it's a, I, I will just tell you in some initial conversations, I know that it's percentage wise, it's more than um, mm -hmm. I think is probably feasible. But before we can make it, my view is before we can make adjustments or concessions to a budget, I at least would like to have a clear view of what it actually means to operate the department. And from there, I can have a discussion with various folks on adjustments that need to be made, but at least this provides an accurate view, a fully transparent view of kind of what we're doing today. Excellent. Very good. Okay. Do you want some companionship on your March 1st meeting? Sure. Okay. You don't know a time yet, though? I don't. Okay. Let us know. I'll keep you posted. Yeah, just let us know. We'll be there to support you. Okay. Um, we'll have to, yeah, we'll have, we'll have to, to post, post it. I'm here anyway <laughs> for the library, same day. Oh, okay. At 5 o'clock, so I don't know. It won't be at 5 because okay. I, I believe the library is at 5 or is it 6. Any uh, questions on that? Um, the van, I do have one question. Mm -hmm. The van driver mm -hmm. um, is paid by, from the municipal budget mm -hmm. or a grant? Municipal, municipal budget mm -hmm. okay thanks and it's one line item for two drivers at 20 uh, right okay so that's important to know all as well. right good and again we're ha i'm happy wait, wait. to it's for two drivers basically this is one part-time 13 hours a week one part-time consistent the other one was like as needed okay so they have oh, one okay. line item i get you right. they have one line item one, mm -hmm. all right not mm -hmm. separate i'm sorry and it's okay and sort of split between the two, if you mm -hmm. will. Mm -hmm. Wow, this would be so a dream. A dream. Well, this would make no. a healthy reality. And, and my, my hope is that they'll understand and listen. Um, I mean, what I will also, I, I don't have it here, but what I will also provide as a second page to the view that you have here on the budget, I'm going to pull some numbers for 18 to 22 in terms of the total population served yes. so that the uh, FinCom team can look at the changes and you'll see them. I did pull a draft just mm -hmm. in looking at the numbers for myself over the last couple of weeks. You will see quite reasonably certain types of programming and services increase between 18 and 19 because of the pandemic things like events and trips mm -hmm. would go down phone conversations and different things went up and then coming out of the pandemic that came down and then the other the started to go back up. up yeah so again I'm, I'm certainly happy to have a conversation with anyone regarding concessions that need to be made but i would love to have that conversation with all of the facts presented right. and then we can right. I can, we can talk about if, if there are concessions that need to be made, we can talk about what that means to the other line mm -hmm. items. And so um, there is nothing budgeted in here 
for programming, so that would be where the foundation grant money formula. is. Sorry. The formula, the formula grant. grant. Yep. And the gift. Why do I keep doing and, that? And, <laughs> and the revolving gift account. The, okay. Though, just a note on the revolving gift account, mm -hmm. we take in an average of $300 a month on the donations. We spend roughly about $1,500 a month right. at current program level. Wow. So um, it would behoove us to have our friends do some. This. And there will yeah. be some okay. more money coming in from and, and, friends. And uh, the, the, word that, uh, the words that came to mind uh, that I think would be very helpful, especially in light of the pantry and the changes and enhancements that are being made to that as well, is that if we can find some sort of consistent or fairly consistent um, monthly contributions, that would be fantastic. Because that average, in some cases, um, is based on not having a donation in a particular month. So that was just the average. But that doesn't mean we saw donations consistently every month. We saw maybe none one month and then several. Mm -hmm. you know, another month. So it's just something to, to think about. This is also mm -hmm. in line, this approach is also in line with other municipalities. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Yay, EOE. And then uh, the um, Office of Elder Affairs annual report. Finally uh, came. <laughs> that is due. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a quick rough draft of it uh, in my folder if anybody has any questions. It is pulling the numbers directly from my senior center. I will say this. Um, our data capture is phenomenal. So uh, we are in very good shape in terms of that. And that makes a lot of what I'm talking about today and going forward much easier. Um, the um, folks at um, Office of Elder Affairs have moved the um, annual report to an online integrated system with my senior center. So it starts to pull information based on certain fields uh, from that already. And then what I have done last week and early this week is I go in and we look at the numbers and make sure that it's pulling in all of the data associated with those categories. And then I'm taking the commentary from Amanda's, this is for fiscal year 22. Mm -hmm. So I am taking all of the commentary from um, Amanda Fisher's um, annual town report and adding that to this annual report. And there's well, some for new numbers, there's new numbers too for this, because I did the annual report so this year. is and for this fiscal is, 22. So yeah, but this is would, fiscal 23. Right. So this oh, is oh, oh, this, this is, is just 22. for 22. Yes. Yes. Yep. So and in order to use for yep. the so in order to two. have consistency, oh, I'm making sure that they match up. Yeah. But I will submit that this week. Oh, good. Um, any questions? And I think the that? numbers will only go up now that we're kind of coming out of this. You know, oh. really everything pandemic. Hopefully, um, and with. With you on board, you know. <laughs> so the one thing that I will say just related to that really quickly, very early, I've only been here for two weeks, but we, and this is not uncommon to the time that we're in post-pandemic. Mm -hmm. We have a very engaged, smaller population of community members that partake in our services and our events. Mm -hmm. Those same folks will participate in many events going forward. It'll be my job, and with the support of all of you, to increase that population so that they that grows, and then they are repeat um, attendees going forward. And so I um, did get the okay to leverage our PR firm because we have a retainer with them. Um, so I will okay. reserve that resource for that particular goal because I think that that's important and it would be money well spent. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Uh, the cultural grant, uh, we did get the paperwork from that. Um, that will be used for Older Americans Day in May of 2023. Um, since I saw that on a prior um, mm -hmm. uh, meeting minutes, I wanted to provide a quick update on that. Uh, my Senior Center, which I mentioned, is something that's very, very important to us. It's basically our lifeline to um, all things. Um, I did add the appointment capability functionality um, to my Senior Center last week. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is something that I used in my prior role, and what made me think of it was the AARP appointment managing process <laughs> for you. Yes. So what that will do is we can set up 
increment based on whatever it is that we have going on, 90 minute appointments, 15 minute appointments, we can use it for clinics and things like that going forward as well. Um, put that right in, it, it fills that slot um, and it keeps everything within the office. Back in, I think maybe in June, they were talking about a key, like they have the senior center in Haverhill, mm -hmm. that we were supposed it's to get a, a key, a fob, or yes. whatever. We will, we will be Are we using going those. on, yes. on with, with that? Them. Okay, yeah, good, good, them. good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because that would also be a... Yeah. Because, I mean, I noticed yesterday, even at the movies, not everyone signed in. We, we have, on the paper, you mean? Mm. There were people who did not sign in, and I'm like, I know you're here. <laughs> so that, you know, whatever reflected you say oh there were 16 people mm -hmm. here were, you know what i don't even remember the number but yeah and well, then 3b we'll use, sometimes too so we'll use there that. Are more people than signing in so okay that would be good recycling i do have something on this but yeah. and and then secondly uh just to round out my senior center uh updates volunteer tracking is available on my senior center so we will do that in the future you can we can set up and um, nisha and i talked about this last week we can set up groups of volunteer activities newsletter collating mm -hmm. uh, meetings volunteers for events whatever it happens to be and then assign volunteers and their hours under each of those categories. Mm -hmm. And so that'll be something that will be housed within the system going forward. Mm -hmm. um, again, just two quick things uh, functionality wise that will help us in the long run that were easy to t get turned on. Mm -hmm. uh, and then our recycling, uh, in my one-on-one uh, -on -one with the town administrator uh, this week, um, she did mention uh, that the town in general is going to a vendor that would pay us a little bit more uh, than the current vendor that is operating the specific recycling textile bin for us um, for the COA. Uh, I wanted to add it to the agenda or to my update today just to talk about it and see if there's an appetite to do that. I'm not familiar with the contract, but I think it's under the friends. It is. Okay. Linda Brown was to um, investigate. She is unfortunately okay. not able to come here today. Um, she has spoken to the friends. They do have the contract, and they said from now on, if we continue, I see, you know, they would be donating that check every month. They get a, a monthly mm -hmm. check, not quarterly, mm -hmm. to, right to our donation account or the revolving account. Okay. Um, my question for this is: Would, would we, we still have get the check? a specific? <laughs> would we have a specific? This is for the friends because right now the Echo Smith or Eco Smith. Mm -hmm. There's one for the library. There's one for the. Um, COA You mean if we, if we move to the new vendor? If we, or is it going to be, this is for the town budget? No. The one that's here, under, if we were to move forward, mm -hmm. we'd get one that's here under the new vendor at the seven cents versus the five, and what's contributed to that specifically will come back to us. Okay. okay. That's what, that's good not to, to go to the general fund. You know, right. So, right. Um, so I guess we would have to, I, I don't know if the friends have to um, renew this contract on a yearly basis or whatever. Um, but maybe I, if you'd like, I could ask Linda. She is our liaison now sure. for between the friends. Maybe she could investigate further with that. Would that would be great. Okay, so I will. I, will I do didn't that. commit to anything one way or the other because right. I didn't know the status of the contract. Because if we if they've had to sign a contract sure. and we're you know if, to if October, we're in, if we're committed, we, yeah, that's right. right. Yep. So, and um, do we know when the friends are having their March meeting? Their next meeting. <sighs> I will tell you. Oh, it's a oh, it's a Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, it is Thursday, March third. Okay. Okay. As of right now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you have the the time? Because I'll remind you of that. Um, time and location would be helpful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Center meeting room, three to four. Okay. Which date again? Sorry. No third. problem. It's the third, March third, Thursday, March third. It's a Friday. Oh. Is it a no. Is it a Friday? Friday, March third is a Friday. Yeah. After doing all these tax appointments, I know I will, it's a Friday. I will look it up. <laughs> and it's John's birthday. <laughs> so. Well, um, I will check. I will check that. 
Yeah, yeah, I think they're generally on Thursday because town halls closed on Friday afternoons most. Right, days. that's right. Yeah. Okay, so it's the second. It must be the second. Okay, March second, Thursday, three to four. Because <laughs> town, you're very good. The town hall is closed. Correct. <laughs> so we will look at the contract and see if there's. We, we can look at that next and bring it back next month. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And then, lastly, in terms of topics uh, regarding the newsletter. Could segue there again. But can sure. we do the composting? What oh yes, that? the the town. Um, I don't have a ton of information on this, but I do know that that's uh, in discussion. Uh, again, similar to um, just kind of a mm -hmm, mm -hmm. consistent townwide uh, vendor for textiles, um, and just what our appetite would be to tie in. I can get more information if this is something that we're interested in, interested in. I think it could be great, um, just as another. Yeah. Yeah. I think it could okay. be. I think that's worth checking into. Okay. Mm -hmm. Composting what? I'm not sure, but I will. Anything that. instead of throwing it in the woods because <laughs> you have to pay for more than one or two barrels, whatever the barrel yes. limit is now, the town mm -hmm. is becoming a dump. So I think they're saying, well, we'll have composting. We're mm -hmm. going to have this other. I think they're also talking about looking into having a mattress place you know like a time or a date yeah. to bring your old mattresses down or whatever because people are just dumping them in the woods and over the last couple town. of years with the pandemic they've real especially in massachusetts with regard to mattresses um and other things they've just really tightened because you can't yeah, yeah they won't yeah. take them anymore so, so i can if if we have an appetite for just that topic in general i can do some more research and bring an update for next month thank you okay yeah thank you okay and and then just lastly the newsletter i did meet with the vendor who uh supports us and the production of the newsletter just to review the uh contract and costs and things like that they were super helpful really looking forward to working with them in the future we are uh march and april newsletter the draft is in process my hope is actually to send it over to the vendor today um and i did spend a little bit of time in the last two weeks my free time reads i didn't print out one for everybody just because i was conscious of trees um, but I did do some redesign on the newsletter just to um, make it a little bit more uh, organized in terms of grouped by topics and whatnot. So there's a, um, I can p pass it around and you can take a look at it. Um, I basically good. did uh, kind of an opening on the front. Um, you'll see that it, there's a town logo on there. I did get permission to use that. <laughs> and then I organized the pages based on topics. So every month it'll be very consistent in terms of where to find things this is in addition to the calendar but the first page will be big updates after the cover uh, big updates for those two months so things that are changing what we want to make sure that people um, receiving the newsletter don't miss out on um, and then any kind of special topics it'll and still be in the same format same format I just mean, visually I mean the, yep. yeah yes same production oh, right. same Everything will be exactly the same. It's just visually a little bit different. Um, the font is a little bit bigger and it's organized based on um, the topic. So there's a uh, nutrition, health and nutrition page. There's a transportation page. There's a trips page, um, ongoing events page. We will have the resources and ways to get involved towards the back. Um, and then it reserves any room for um, friend not this month because we actually have a couple of special topics one being the pantry and one being thank yous and volunteer appreciation month mm -hmm. um but it'll give us one or two pages to flex every month for things like that and this is good because it's like starting new or not new but yes. we're rebuilding it everything is going to be fresh and different and new and yes come <laughs> yes yeah. not that anything was wrong before but yeah. going forward um it's another step in the rebuilding process exactly <laughs> Thank you, um, Sean. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Irene. This looks really <laughs> terrific. And wonderful. what kind of collating or volunteers will it require to get this out? Nothing new. What does that mean? So whatever you, <laughs> whatever you saw, uh, whatever was needed historically is what will be needed going forward. The only difference is just visually and graphically it's different. The pages the way it comes together, the way we will get it from the production company yes. will be exactly the same. The only insert that we will have, my wish and hope and desire and what I will keep in my mind 
is we will just have one insert going forward and that will be the calendar yes. front and back yeah that's it everything else is organized so that it fits within the booklet so it will be insert calendar fold, fold tape, tape label. label okay so volunteers exactly. will yep. volunteers be like we okay. have a list i think we Nisha do. has the list we looked at yeah. it this morning yep and we are earmarking either the 23rd or the 27th my hope uh, is somewhere around in between those days. Okay. Uh, depending on when I get it back from the production yes, company. Yes, exactly. And the senior population will love that, that they can come back for the folding and the taping. Yes. Well, because when we had the yes, holiday luncheon missing. and I was going around chatting with people, I heard that more than once. Yes. Yeah. We yeah. want to be able to have that. That's a nice social mm -hmm. event for us and, <laughs> yeah, and other people as well. So that'll be very well. And I know we haven't done it in the last few months, but we are sending it out to the full list. A huge oh, thank you to Irene for. It's not up, done. That's yet. okay. It's a big undertaking, but over the last Two couple weeks. of weeks, <laughs> <have a> week. <laughs> uh, she has been diligently working to update that list. So, uh, my initial intention wasn't to update the newsletter to this degree, um, but the more I thought about it, it no, just seemed good. like the right thing to do. So, uh, I'm open. So. It, it hasn't gone out yet. It hasn't gone to the the production company. So I'm open to any feedback. Question. I know postage has gone up. Has it gone up for this type of bulk mailing as well? That I don't know um, yeah, because I don't have. Just I, I would assume it cost. would a little bit based right. on the average cost of the. Right. Because I, I really, I, I like the idea that you get a paper copy. A lot of people we heard feedback from people mm -hmm. that they wanted, the paper copy, mm -hmm. but, I think if we can get more people to be on that email list and get it get it through email not sent to your home mm -hmm. and then have extras that are around town that if you really needed it mm -hmm. it's not everyone not everyone that's going to get an email is going to say oh i need a paper mm -hmm. copy too so my my thinking on this again and just in the last couple of weeks on my ride home <laughs> is I'm hoping with the redesign and the updates that it sparks some sort of engagement and activity, whether it be um, in-person participation, participation, phone calls to me, to the team, mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, just to spark some activity. That's my hope. Um, so I can get some insight into what it is that they're looking at, mm -hmm. when they're looking at it, and how they want to receive it. So the first iteration was to do the redesign to try to spark some of that, and then I'll be brainstorming ways to come up with um, opportunities to get them to convert to email. It's easy when you're a retail store because you can say, get 10% off your <laughs> first right, order right. <laughs> if, you, if you join our email list. But that was the example that I was talking through with um, folks around the office over the last week. Um, something like that mm -hmm. to to spark that move to, to email I think would be great because candidly I know I know that we send it out to everybody over 60 years old and um, it's a it's a big number especially by comparison to some of the other towns mm -hmm. um, but again we'll use it to spark some <coughs> renewed again, focus and energy and again it's a big number of seniors that we that's have right. in this that's town right. that's right it is. so <laughs> And then just really quickly, upcoming <laughs> events are listed there, the new ones. I uh, love it. That mm. are. What's this lunch at Holy Grail and lunch yeah, at the yeah, Poets? Maybe oh, put oh, where the Holy Grail, Grail is. Yeah. Yeah. Holy Grail, Grail restaurant. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. It's yeah. right over the, right over the border in New Hampshire. Like, it's good. Well, Holy Grail, what town's it in? You know, oh. or the lunch at the Poets Inn. People may not know. You know where the is details that? are in the. Are in the will be in the newsletter in more detail. I just wanted to provide a quick snapshot. Oh, this is great. I want to go. I want to do everything. Me too. <laughs> if you haven't been to the, the, to the, Greek the Peabody <laughs> Essex Museum lately, it's it's definitely worth the trip. Yes. It's beautiful. Yeah. What is it, sir? The Peabody, Peabody Essex, Essex Museum. Museum. Yes, I've been there several times. Yeah, we're going to do a trip there. So those are my updates. Any questions or anything that we didn't cover? Did you go home at all in the last two weeks, or have you been here 24-7? <laughs> because you've gotten Sean. so much done. Yeah, really. I'm, I'm, impressed. I'm very impressed. Me too. <laughs> so, yes. Thank you. Oh, sure. I love this. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Anybody? Should we move um, on? Do you have any questions? Um, at our last meeting, I know this is under new business. At our last meeting, we had mentioned something about the U.S. aging oh, COVID can we flu go vaccine back up to clinics. Old business and then we'll, oh, yeah. Well, I don't know if 
that's something that you've discussed with. Well, you're Sean. not leaving. Are you leaving no. after this? No. Oh, okay. no, no, no. Oh, okay. No, see, he's not going to oh. be like, now I'm gone. No, no. no. I'm here for the whole oh. meeting. Okay. No, it used to be that the director would then leave, okay. and it was like, well, I'll you stay. need to be stay part of this. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay, so in under old business, FinCom meeting and budget update. Thank you, Sean. You just gave us that. Okay. The AARP tax program, um, since we last met, they have added an additional two, two o'clock appointment for every day with three people. So an additional 24 appointments. So we now have 120 appointments for the taxes beginning this Friday. And we are full. It is full. It is full. There is not one spot available. So. Um, Can I ask a question on that really quickly? Yes. I did do a shout out to that in the newsletter for March and April just to check in for any cancellations do you think okay. I should keep that I think if there were cancellations they will be calling okay you no know, so I, I, I would take that out okay. because we are full and I believe Nisha was going to contact um, Haverhill and tell them we are full no more you know okay and if you get any you could just tell them they're full or you know if, if I have an, a cancellation I will let you guys know, and if somebody calls. Okay, but we'll you don't think we need way. to put it in the newsletter? I really don't think so, because okay. then, then we're going to get phone calls and say, sorry, we're full. I mean, I've already had kind of disappointed people, mostly from Haverhill, saying, well, we in Haverhill, we, we didn't even start making them until February 15th, or yeah, February 15th. How can this be that you're full already? And I said, well, we started in the beginning of January making these appointments, so mm -hmm. we're full. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, yeah. And thank you for all your... Administrative it's work been, it's and It's been different, but next next year we'll, it will be back to the COA workers to do this job. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think this typically was done by Nisha before. I, I, if we can, I would like to regroup specifically yeah. on, that on that event, yep. post event. Or if we, yes. Um, mm -hmm. Just, to, just yes, to recap. I believe so. Okay. And you've done the annual report. You've discussed it. Is there any other old business? New business, March, April newsletter, we've done that. Um, food pantry, D I believe oh. you have something from um, Deb. Deb, yes. I have that as well. So Deb Stevenson um, was unable to make it today because of a medical procedure. And she sent an email um, that, well, I'll take the pantry today. So no one had signed up for the pantry Thank today. You. and I'll. I'll be there because I need to work on the list. <laughs> Thank Continue you. I need to work on the list. Um, she also said Groveland Congregational Church Missions Team mm -hmm. um, discussed the $1,000 donation made in 2022 earmarked for the pantry refrigerator but never used. Right. Um, the money appears to still be in the revolving account. Mm -hmm. The team voted to leave the money with the COA to be used either for market basket gift cards or for non-food items like laundry, cleaning supplies, paper goods that mm -hmm. we're finding are really in demand but not provided mm -hmm. by our neighbor's table. Mm -hmm. Um, and our personal care items to be given out to pantry clients. The church would appreciate being informed when and how the $1,000 is spent. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I agree with so all of that. I what, think that's great. What happened was the I, church I donated $1,000 yeah. um, yeah. to help get the refrigerator, and then we got a, a total amount from... I believe it was Pentucket, Pentucket Bank, Bank. Mm -hmm. did paid for the whole thing. So that thousand dollars kind of sat there and they were like, well, we never heard anything about it, et cetera. So they did have their meeting on Sunday and decided to do that. Um, and I also speaking of paper goods and that kind of thing, I want to shout out to Bergen Daly of the library and the children's room. They are been, they have been doing donations, monthly donations, just starting. They did a whole thing on, um, I think they were little individual soaps and body lotions and body things. They brought that, and I think this, this month they are doing tissues and paper goods. 
and it's you know the younger people coming and bringing something to donate here so shout out to them thank you and shout out to anyone who has donated any yeah okay so that was the, the pantry update and you are also um, we've heard about the extended hours I want to thank the volunteers um, to keep that up and running and going forward did you put in the newsletter I haven't looked at it yet thank you um, the new hours and everything mm -hmm. for the okay great so Deb Stevenson will have to alter the um, sign up genius for volunteers for those hours on Wednesdays and Thursdays because they're different than mm -hmm. we have been signing for right. Right. Hmm. okay so she will need to know that will you let her know that yes okay because you're kind of pantry lady <laughs> thank you um, anything else on the food pantry? No? Um, paper products um, We're in need are of paper. highly desired and infrequently available. So suggestions like, are you talking toilet paper, paper towels, tissues? Paper towels have been in there and they disappear quickly. Um, I haven't, I think there's been toilet paper once or twice and that disappeared quickly. Um, tissues, I mean Kleenex. Tissues. So just a, just a couple of things really quickly on the, the food pantry in general. Uh, just at, for myself and then as a group, I, I want us to think about how best to use that going forward. Mm -hmm. um, historically, we've used the food pantry as kind of our base and kind of our center point to go out right. and I know we have which is a really great thing we have several food uh, resources avail health and nutrition resources available to us we have the UTC boxes we have meals on wheels that we help participate with um, we have a number of things um, I don't know this yet but my hunch is that some of that is diluting from the pantry so I think how do we take the pantry and m kind of m feed no pun intended but feed the the population as uh, using the pantry as our base and mm -hmm. kind of going out so right now just to visually like in my mind it's kind of here and then we have all of these other options so how do we use donations gift cards that sort of thing to round out the supplies for the food pantry and then gr we'll grow that the usage of the <coughs> pantry by kind distributing of out. distributing out from the food pantry um, so that's just something to think about not to necessarily solve for today mm -hmm. um, but the way that I have watched it over the last couple of weeks is you've got the, the three or four here and then then you've got the food pantry so I'd like to try to merge that in some way so to speak um, to make sure that we deliver in, in the other town that I worked in, you know, every week we delivered a bag, mm -hmm. you know, they, everyone signed up the pantry, the physical pantry was the hub for that activity. So people were coming in, but also a lot of items were going out. Um, so as we grow mm -hmm. that, and I think the two days in our neighbor's table with the fresh goodies I think is the foundation for that but Start. let's think about how we bring mm. it outward absolutely I'm I have had some questions in my mind as well about um, um, how do we read the situation to in the next month or two to uh, during this transition time mm -hmm. of changes to really figure out what is most needed and how to provide that. I think with the cap, with the order that we place on Tuesday, this is gonna be one of the really great things. We're gonna organically capture that automatically. Um, so I think that's yeah. gonna be helpful. And then once we get some of that information under our belt, again, take the food pantry as our, our base, at our home base and mm -hmm. bring it out, you know, distribute it outward. Mm. And, and this is from courtesy of the food pantry mm. made possible from donations by, if that makes sense. Mm. Okay. Again, not to solve for today, but something no. to be thinking about. Um, so 
I know we have some very dedicated food pantry volunteers, mm -hmm. and again, I'm sure do. going to both of you. I'm not one of them, <laughs> uh, but do you need more volunteers? Irene, would you say? Because I know you and Deb. I, well, with I know these a extended few. hours, different hours. Um, actually, yeah, we may. Um, Wednesday, two to four, that's one person probably, mm -hmm. depending on how much traffic there is. And we won't know that Yet. probably for a month. Mm -hmm. It's going to take some time for people who come to the pantry to Get figure out mm -hmm. what works for them and their schedules as well. And then Thursdays, um, by appointment, 9 to 3, but we know that there will be some people who will sure. come in, who yep. will drop anyway. in anyway. Right. So the 9 to 3 is an extension of 10 to 2, so maybe... Two more hours, right? Well, maybe people could do 9 to 12 and then 12 to 3. three. That's what we were thinking. Okay. So do we need more volunteers? Should we be putting out a call right now for more volunteers at the food pantry? I don't know that we need more. So far it's been um, really four of us covering right. it. I, I but, you know, know, we're coming into... We're, We'll, we will be coming into nicer weather, vacation times, whatever, whatever. Mm. For instance, today, I know someone backup, had, so backup, you are, you're the backup today, and, and, and it's not right because you're here, and right. the other person happened right. to be, you know, not here and on the board. So right. three out of four of the volunteers are board members available at this point um, in time on this Wednesday and to whenever right. this meeting is over. Right, probably. Probably. Um, there have been, I think, two other people who have been quarried, but um, Deb has not yet scheduled. called upon their services. Okay. Um, that's a good question. I have another, but I would I have like another volunteer, too. So. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah. yeah, so if you do volunteer, you need to be quarried and trained on how right. it works. So if anyone out there is interested, right. we're always looking for any kind of volunteers at the COA. Okay. Right? Okay. But this is a good question. Should, it, should we ask for people who might be interested to volunteer for these new hours in the, in the newsletter? We, we certainly could. Maybe we should. Maybe even just general COA volunteers we, which we have yep. you have but mm -hmm. I mean in speci okay then specifically, specifically for the if you're taking pantry. that tax AARP thing mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. there'll be room right there <laughs> right in my right in my head <laughs> uh, I haven't even looked yeah. at that yet but okay maybe we should because you know summer is going to be coming before you know it and people are going to be taking off or wanting well, and just to know you have somebody to substitute and our volunteers are in the, exactly, are in the senior category, so we never know when a substitute might be needed. Uh, at exactly, the last exactly. You yeah. know, to have, you, so to basically have three shifts and only four people working the three shifts. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I think it, it wouldn't hurt to have six at least. Well, uh, if, like yeah. Two for, yeah. Okay. okay. Good. Um, the Groveland Municipal Stakeholder Committee, after our meeting last month, I did go and speak to, um, um, do, 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 I can't think of her name now. Anyway, um, that they haven't started a meeting yet. She said probably it will, the uh, committee will go about 18 months and you'll have maybe two or three um, meetings in within that 18 months so the people who said they were interested um once i find out you know i'm on the list to, i put my name down and said just contact me when the meeting is coming and she said probably wouldn't be until march anyway and i will contact the people who expressed interest in last month you know, to be on that committee can you remind me what the stakeholder meeting agenda is it's basically um they want input from many different facets of the town and the community. Um, it's not, it's in general, it's, it's from Groveland, but then there will be other towns and we're all like, what do we, what does the town need? It's almost like a, 
a future planning kind of meeting um, in terms of, you know, transportation or um, food needs or different different things this community needs um, who? or the, the town. So who? Yeah, who whose impetus is this? <sighs> okay, well, um, um, this is... I'm trying to find that every so name. every so many years it comes up town, yeah. municipalities have to update the data so this committee will work to update crucial demographic and housing data and wants to be sure that the voices of Groveland's senior population are heard right thank you in a yes. nutshell from her <laughs> initial letter yes <laughs> Annie Schindler I'm sorry yeah. Annie Schindler is the town planner in our environmental program coordinator I couldn't I'm sorry Annie I couldn't remember your name um, so I did ask her and it will be just you know housing transportation um, this kind of thing. I mean from that a few years ago that's how we got the, t the the bus and you know they're they're just looking at the different communities like Groveland had no public transportation at all up until we just had that bus Put, best line put on and that was you know thank you to Rebecca got that rolling um, and just you know different needs more housing for seniors you know affordable housing diff different things like that but it's not just going to be the seniors they're going to take different people from the town and what are the needs so, so they want the COA board represented at that. exactly they want some representation from the you know community okay. and the COA so yes and you you signed up for that I, right? yes okay. yeah and so, so I was Barbara on the before. and Deb, Deb expressed, yeah, okay. expressed interest yeah. as well so yeah. yeah I remembered you but I couldn't remember with <laughs> yeah I think I thought it was good yeah, think it was it was Deb. Deb. yeah. Okay. I just looked at the minutes and we just approved um, okay we have the COA textile bin I will contact Linda about that upcoming programs the COVID and flu vaccines oh I skipped her so the U.S. Aging COVID and Flu Vaccine Clinics, we had been um, contacted before you were on board to see from age span to see if we were interested in hosting a flu and COVID vaccine clinic here sometime between now and December. Um, we would be responsible for all the advertising and everything they would, they would pay for things to happen when I was speaking to the our public town nurse she said that she she herself didn't feel that it was necessary for us to actually host one here nowadays where it's so easy to get the COVID shots and the and the flu shots at your local CVS if you can get here you can get to CVS it's you know it's the same thing and rather than being in the business of that and it's really more I would believe a health our health department not the COA but you know that would put it on um, or in conjunction with and when I spoke with the health department they they weren't really interested but that's up to we had tabled it if it's something you feel that would be beneficial for us to have um, you know we could go forward but it was um, through through age span I believe I think it, we, it could be a watch item just over the next few months mm -hmm. as we go into the fall. Right, um, right. That would be the best time to do it, September, right. October. Well, and I think at this time what they were, we were talking talking about was, you know, is there an interest, would you be a host town kind of thing, and, you, you know, sign up. Um, I, yeah, right now I think everyone's pretty, you know, anyone who's wanted a, sh a vaccine shot or a flu vaccine, has gotten it <laughs> and what came to mind when you were talking about it was if we didn't do necessarily a, uh, play a role as a host for the clinics then we could make a concerted effort to advertise transportation transportation to, to CVS or CVS or somewhere during that time period yes when that that that's kind of my feeling because you my know, feeling on them is it's uh, they're helpful when they're needed mm -hmm. so we would just Kind of collectively watch right. if it's needed as right. things change right and if that reoccurs that we feel like it's something that we need to do we certainly can partner with the board of health nurse and her team to and do it on our that. own not yep. necessarily through and be a host for yep. many communities coming right. here right 
especially where we don't have a center. Right. So it's like right. it's tough. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We did them before, but we had a center and right. it was during the pandemic. So and we did well, both and COVID we have and flu. we have had well, not through COA. They advertise it through the COA, but mm -hmm. um, we had flu clinics here. Mm -hmm for many years you'd come and get your flu shot but I now would, it's available i, I so will easy. tell you administratively there's a lot of overhead to them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it would be there would it would be right. a lot of paperwork on on our my part right. yes <laughs> so <laughs> well, so and i'm sure which, in the health department right, too where they which would is need to which do is that. perfectly fine if it's there's a need so mm -hmm. we'll just watch it right and see I, I was kind of thinking the same thing and about we'll message the, the transportation. transportation. Like, you know, we will get you all there on Monday mm -hmm. and maybe Wednesday to get your, you know, mm -hmm. sign up. We'll come pick you up, bring you to CVS, yeah. get your flu shot, yeah. you know, Medicare pays for it, yeah. whatever, or your COVID shot yeah. during that season. Yeah. That's kind of how I was thinking, yeah. too. But. Perfect. All right. Um, I, I'm going to piggyback with a question. Sean, do you know of any way that someone a senior who is homebound can have someone go to their location and give them a shot. I don't. Okay, because we did have one call in the outreach office and I... Did you send it to the health department? I sent it to the health department and um, suggested that this, got back to the person and suggested that she also call Haverhill. But I don't think, that's a huge need, but I became aware that, oh, there can be a need for that service. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how to really answer it. And I never followed up completely to find out if someone actually went to her location. We can, we can check. Inside. Thank you. Okay. Um, I will mention the upcoming programs that you will hear about when you get or read about when you get your newsletter but some upcoming events March 7th we're having a new staff meet and greet pizza party March 9th will be lunch at the Holy Grail restaurant in New Hampshire March 21st coffee hour with represented representative Adrian Ramos or Ramos March 23rd learn about scams with detective Danielle Burrell March 27th, a trip to the Peabody Essex Museum. April 3rd, lunch at the Poets Inn in Haverhill. April 10th, volunteer appreciation brunch. And April 27th, a trip field trip to the Encore Casino. So we have a lot going on for March and April. Plus the other programs we have going on every week um, there's game day on Wednesdays, and there's 3B Fit on Tuesdays at 10. Um, there's yoga on, Friday yoga on Friday mornings. And we just heard from Peggy Pope. She'll be doing another series of watercolors Great. in April um, from 10 to 1130 um, on Wednesdays, April 5th, 12th, 19th, and 26th. It's $40 for a four-week session. You must pre-register, and if you do register, you can make your checks out directly to Peggy. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? No. I have another. Oh, another? Did I forget? <laughs> no. No. Um, recently, um, we've had the passing of somebody who served on the COA board for yes, years you. and years and years. Um, would you like me to send a card to his wife on behalf of the board. That would be wonderful, thank you. All right, I'll do it's that. It's Frank Sadowski, he was a member of this board. He was I also, yeah. oh yeah, he just passed. You remember him. Yeah. Um, he was also, uh, did a lot for the COA in terms of he had painting classes, he did yes. um, handwriting analysis programs. He was very involved. And, he's Mark's um, dad, isn't he? He's yes. Mark's dad, yes. And um, in fact, he went off the board when I did, and you replaced him, and Irene replaced me when we had to go off. So he, he was active up until like two years ago, mm -hmm. but then his health issues just, you know, came. So yeah, he, he passed. It was very sad. He was a nice, nice man. Thank you, Irene. Would you do that? I will. Oh, there's so much I forget. <laughs> Is there anything else other? 
Well, I would like to express gratitude to the um, director search committee and um, my gratitude in the positive results from the search committee. <laughs> so yes. thank you, Sean. And thank you, uh, Larry, for all your organization and for Marie and Barbara serving. Thank you. Thank yes. You. Thank you. It's nice to uh, have a process result in so much positivity and yeah. productivity. So yeah, thank we you. hit a home run, Absolutely. didn't we? We, we sure yes. did. Yeah. Hit that and I guess I should, <laughs> I should thank the board for sticking through with the board, staying on until we you know, had the directory for everyone pulling their part. Yes. Every single one of you did something to help <laughs> keep the COA going. And I, I really, really and truly thank you. Yeah. Um, and for the two members who are not here, you also. <laughs> so, thank you. That will be a big focus for myself and Nisha at the volunteer brunch, is to really publicly, again, thank everybody who stepped up and just kept everything moving. And Juggling the balls. Yeah, just kept everything going. So everybody, you know, volunteers always go above and beyond in dedicating their time and their resources. But I think it's very safe to say in the last year, um, the group of volunteers that the community has have really gone above and beyond to, to keep everything moving. So I'm looking forward to celebrating all of you. And that volunteer um, luncheon on April 10th, that should be something that we as board members should should attend. Do oh, we definitely. Need to let you know that we're yeah. going to attend. Or invites just... will be going out. Okay. Yeah. All right. Special invites will be going out. I would want to be yeah. there. Yeah. That's yeah. that's when you Thank always everybody. attend as yeah. a board okay. member. Yeah. Great. Okay. Is there anything else? No. Do you have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. At 10:45. Thank you. All right. Oh, next meeting is March 15th, um, 9.30, probably here in this meeting room. Yes, I've been told that we have this place reserved for the third Wednesday morning of each Ongoing. month. Perfect. Yes, it could be odd infinitum, I'm not sure. <laughs> oh. Yep. Okay. Good. Great. Thank you. Very Meeting adjourned. Meeting. Thank you for coming.